Scott Morgan here of Broncos Radio. Joining me this afternoon is uh, both coaches of the Coopersville uh, basketball teams. I've got uh, Coach Pete Van Kempen and uh, Coach uh, Mike Marshall. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks, Scott. Hey, Scott. Uh, let's, uh, let's recap. We're all done with the season, and uh, we'll start with you, Mike. Kind of get your uh, thoughts from way back, you know, in September and all the way up through the this season, what did you think? Um, yeah, thought uh, thought it was a, a good year. Um, I think if you look at us, uh, you know, early in the year, uh, you know, wins, losses, we struggled a little bit there, but we were trying to piece together some things, um, trying to figure out our team and what we had. And um, I think when if you look at when we get to conference, especially the second time through conference, you know, um, beat Spring Lake, played Unity tough, um, actually played everyone else tough the second time through. Um, kids started to really understand what we wanted from them and I mean they came and played hard worked hard at practice so those are things that you know you you want from your group and you you look forward to so I thought it was a thought it was a good year another good stepping stone for us Pete how about you get a little recap of you know what you, you know, what you saw um well back in September if you'd have asked me I would have said uh we're gonna be a little struggle especially early on um I was thinking that we had a lot of, we returned one starter, had um, our guards were all pretty relatively young experience wise uh, and didn't know how our personnel situation would really shape up. And I felt like as the year went on, once we got settled into a um, our roles, I think Mark might have said this to you. Once we figured out our roles, things really improved, and uh, I would agree with that. I think uh, one of the hardest things for any team in any program, and I think Mike's kind of going through it right now, and then we went through it for a few years, is like helping kids learn their roles. And when it's new, roles are hard. And as you get going, um, kids start seeing their roles earlier and earlier and earlier. As freshmen even, they get kind of... They can see their future, and we kind of help them see their future and their role. And uh, it's still got to be defined when they're on the varsity team. Um, but I was really very excited with how the year went. I um, wasn't excited with how it ended. I thought we could have obviously won the league if we win the last two, one of the last two games at home. But at the same time, if you had told me we had that <laughs> chance, um, back in the beginning of the season, I said, you know, I, I don't think that's possible. And so... Our kids, I felt like, achieved at a very high level for their abilities, and I was pretty excited about that. I would agree. And, and for you, Mike, uh, proudest moment of the season? Oh, man. Um, yeah, I mean, on some level, I'd, I'd say, you know, the spring light game. Um, I think that's one that, that everyone looks to. A good overtime win against a, a solid program. Um, but I think coming back that next game and playing – um, you know, unity. We lost by two, and and we we just stuck in the game. And like I said, I think that's one one point where we started to kind of figure out, um, you know, that we could play with those teams. And um, and I think that 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 was a big turning point for us moving forward. So, yeah. how about you, Pete? Um, hmm. I think really the I don't know. I got a couple, but the one that really stands out is the Whalen game. Last game of the year, we just lost two miserable games here, two very, one very close game. We could have gone down there and just gone through the motions, and we just pounded them. I felt like we played really hard. We actually felt like we get, were still getting better. And uh, we went down to Wayland, who was a good team, 500 in the OK, uh, whatever they are, gold. And uh, we just took it to them from the, right from the jump. And uh, everybody got to play. Everybody played really hard. And I was really proud of our guys, and they know. We told them, you know, after the game, like, this is, I don't know if I can be prouder of a team, no matter what happened in the district tournament. And I, I do think, though, like, we used it as a stepping stone to get a little bit better. And uh, so that that's it. Mike, um, let's talk a little bit about what the, you know, freshman and JV, te you know, teams, and basically we call it down on the farm, <laughs> what you see down there that you really you went, wow, hey, I'm, I'm kind of excited about this next group coming up. Yeah, um, I mean, I think 
looking at both of those groups, I think we're very excited moving forward for what we've got coming up. Um, you know, the JVs with Coach Flag, like he he had them playing, um, playing hard, um, playing well, winning some games, um, and even being in some games that maybe they didn't really have a lot of business being in. So I give I give Coach Flag a lot of credit for that. Um, and so I think that there's some of those kids that they're going to make us make some tough decisions next year. Um, you know, especially if they come out and show up this summer and put in the work and put in the time. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be tough, but I think that's a good sign for us. That's something that we that we need as a program if we want to continue to to move forward. Um, you know, same thing with the freshmen. Um, we had a, a good turnout there with good numbers. Um, Coach Sellen, same thing. They had a successful year. They got to see some wins. They got some some close losses and, and got to play some teams that were probably better than them and to grow that way too. So I think moving forward, um, I think between those two groups, we're going to have some, some good decisions to make, some hard decisions to make. But I think we've got some kids who, um, you know, even in talking to some of the players, some of the parents, some kids who are trying to do some AAU stuff, trying to get into some other stuff where basketball is starting to kind of be – Hey, uh, you know, more of a priority than I think it's been the last few years for for our program. So that's that's really exciting for me moving forward. Excellent, Pete. How about yours? In, in you know, looking at the freshmen at JV, good staff and everything down there working with these young kids. Well, I think here at our school we're really lucky. Like Mike has Eric, who's been here for the Coopersville guy. He's been here for ten years. He's got Heather, who's been a coach for a long time. I'm lucky enough to have John Smith, our JV coach, and. And Doug Seatsman, of course, who's 25 years of coaching. And uh, but I'll say about the players that um, we're really excited about what we have. I think uh, I think we have kids that play hard. I think we have kids that um, are just gritty. We won a lot of games for freshmen and JV. I mean, I think this. I was trying to figure it out, and we were talking about it. it might be the first time we've ever had double-digit wins at both at all three levels in the same year. I'm not sure. There's a few years ago we might have, um, but um, this is a really solid, deep group of players. We'll be competitive. We might not be super great, but we'll be competitive for a few years, and that's pretty exciting. So uh, now we're into you know spring, springtime. What do you do, Mike? Now from here until you know basketball season, what's what's your plans and stuff for the girls basketball? Um, yeah, I think I think one of the hardest things like last year is we had a lot of kids who were playing spring sports, and so I was really excited to get into the gym and get working. And with all those kids playing spring sports, which is great, um, you know, we didn't do a whole lot in the spring. We waited until summer. So I think seeing that going, hey, we got to do a little bit this spring and, and try to find some opportunities where some of those kids can get in. Um, and I think you, I think that's possible and doable. I think again, kids who want to. Um, <coughs> And then it's just about figuring out what our what our plans are for the summer, and and so you know finding a couple camps to get to, getting some open gyms, getting the kids in, um, and just getting them playing as much as possible. I think is is kind of our goal moving forward. Um, you know, I got to meet with my coaches, and we got some things we want to look at at um, continuing to build on as far as you know doing a ten thousand shot club for our kids, and you know just adding some some other. Um, things for them to kind of look to do where they can do more on their own and not just always having to come in and you know make us open the gym for them as well so just kind of trying to find some balance for us and them they still got to enjoy summer and enjoy being a kid but um if again if we want to move forward we got to also put in some time so there's a balance there definitely pete i'll let you uh pretty much like coach marshall um, spring is really hard a lot of kids if they're not playing a spring sport they're doing bat in our at least now, our boys have started to try to do more basketball, um, but most kids are in a spring sport, yeah. and uh, and I don't know. I'm I still think it's in, something you should be encouraged, and uh, if you can get in the gym and shoot on your own, once the weather gets nice, a lot of kids can shoot outside. Um, really, it comes down to, like he said, what are our summer plans? How are we going to work this out where every kid gets some chance to play in June? kind of let them go to football and everything else in July and we do some open gyms and some workouts in July and then August we're pretty down again for fall sports uh, September when school starts we'll ramp up um, individual workouts again maybe some open gyms some kids go play in a league but a lot of it is uh, I think a lot of it's similar around the state um, so there are schools that do more basketball uh, there are schools that do less basketball I think we have a pretty good balance here we try to like kids do their own and try to let kids play other sports and we're still small enough right I mean, yeah exactly get to about 12 1300 kids and yeah. it'll be a little different yep but 
how do you, you know, for eighth graders, how do you reach out and get to them and say, okay, you know, I want you to be ready for basketball season, you know, because you'll be an incoming freshman. How do you reach out to them? Um, I mean, the biggest thing we do, we just try to um, get their information from the coaches that they have, um, okay. you know, that they had, and, and try to get down there and have a meeting with them um, and get them involved because I think that's a big piece of, of, of next year for us and for those kids is getting those, you know, incoming freshmen started as soon as possible and getting them to feel comfortable around the high school kids and, and everyone else and us coaches, um, starting to build those, those relationships. Um, I don't know. Maybe Pete's got a better answer <laughs> yeah, than that yeah. one. But. More experience? What? Uh, yeah. Kind of the same. Um, the only thing I probably do, it's a little different than Mike, and a lot of it's numbers-wise, is I send out a blanket email to all the 8th graders and say, a sign-up form, basically, and say, okay, we're starting over from scratch, you're signing up for basketball again. And that enables us to keep a database. I know that they have final. we have a thing, a system here with the athletics, but they don't really get that cranking until April or May, and I want people to like at least know that there's someone out there. And um, then we we we've been we've had like our freshman team this year had six kids that didn't go to middle school here, so we'll have a lot of that. That's kind of the hard part is making sure that if anybody's going to sign, figuring out okay who might be coming here from other schools, how do I keep how do I get communication with them. Um, I hear through the grapevine people come up to me and say, "Hey, this kid's coming from this school. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, I can't, you know, cold call him." And so, I don't know. It's pretty much what he does, to be honest. Sure. Like, can we get him in the gym? And we can't get him in the gym until the Monday after Memorial Day. So, I mean, with the high schoolers, so we kind of don't even try. Like, you start when you can, and the thing I like that we do is we really mix up our teams a lot in the summer. We have our kids in July. It's all one open gym. Everybody plays together. Okay. Um, make put it on the seniors to make sure freshmen are included. And I mean, they might not get the ball a lot, but they're running up and down the floor with them. <laughs> and uh, the but it, but it's but it's yeah. Get used to playing hard and playing fast, and um, and also just get to know some kids. Even if they don't know them, know them. They know who Mark DeVries is. They know who. Eli Spencer is, and uh, they're on the team with them. And I don't know, I think it's pretty cool for a freshman, actually. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know if you had something, you know, like you where you had you invited the eighth graders to a game and, and met with the te- the current uh, varsity team and kind of, you know, did some sort of planning like that with with them. And, you know, to kind of make that special for that group. Hey, you're coming in. Here's our var- current varsity team. We're going to talk a little bit about you, show a little bit about that. I didn't know if that was something you were able to do or allowed to do with, you know, I never know with MHSAA rules and stuff with all of you guys, or if you ever even thought of something like that before. Well, the boys come up to a game in December. Okay. And so then, you know, and I we're, we go down there and watch them play, oh, and I think you do the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So... I mean, that's your yep. That's kind of it. I okay. mean, as far as a formal, they're done for boys. They're done December thirteen or fifteen or whatever. Yeah, we're just kind of cranking in our yeah. season. It's so it's you know, those kids come to camps. Your kids come to camps. I'm just saying, seventh, camps. And eighth grade. Our, our eighth grade coaches do a pretty good job of, of finding because their season doesn't start till after Christmas break. So they always try to find a Friday game where they can come and um, watch game. But you know, like Pete said, mostly informal, but. Um, okay. I think that's a good thing for those for those middle school coaches to do, and so that's always been fun. Is our seventh and eighth graders do that? So you know, find a day to do that. All right. Final thoughts, Mike, on the Coopersville Broncos basketball for girls. Um, yeah, just excited for uh, year three. It sounds kind of crazy <laughs> right over there, but um, excited. I, I think we've got um, you know a lot of good players that play hard. A lot of players that are just just good kids. Um, you know, you don't really have to twist their arm to show up and to, and to work hard. And, and I think a lot of that comes from, you know, their parents and the families. And, and I think that's a special thing about Coopersville we've got is um, we just got great families. And so those, those are things that um, keep you wanting to do what you're doing and, and keep you working hard because you know you got the support behind you with all that stuff. So, Pete? I don't know. I can't, I can't do any better than that. <laughs> I know. Um, they did a nice job. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, th- I think uh, – I think – I'm hoping that next year will be just as exciting as this year. I think their team, 
Mike, the girls team was very competitive in a lot of games and fun. It was aggressive. Basketball um, obviously improved, and I think our team was probably surprising to a lot of people. Um, and we played really hard. And I think, you know, every, people just want, I say, if you can be competitive year in and year out, the way our league is with all these private schools and all this, I mean, we have two. He has he had two girls teams in their league playing in the quarterfinal. Yep. We have two boys teams playing in a regional final tonight. Yep. In our league, and I mean, so it's obviously quality basketball. Um, and so, just excited. I'm excited. Thank you for doing everything you do. Appreciate um, it. You do a lot, and uh, it really does help people watch. And I think it's it's nice, it's a little more public. We're a little more people outside. I think more people who don't aren't from Coopersville watch than you probably know. And I think that helps all of us. Okay. Well, yeah. appreciate it. Thank you much. And uh, like I said, we will keep track of you throughout uh, spring and summer. We'll keep touching with you guys. And we'll see you next winter as uh, we get ready to go again another season. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Take care. Yeah, thank you.